Naro is one of the towns close to the largest indigenous forest in East Africa, the Mao Forest. However, important to note is that Naro sits on the most degraded part of the Mao East Forest. As a result, the town experiences a myriad of issues which include unpredictable weather patterns that have contributed to drought and food insecurity, loss of livestock, wildlife, displacement of communities in search of water and pasture. More to that, forest degradation has also led to regular occurrences of floods and landslides in the region. The dilapidation of the climatic conditions around the East Mao Forest has been greatly attributed to the indigenous Manyata inhabited by pastoral communities. The circular enclosures are made from the bent wood sticks, plastered over with sand, soil, and cow dung. To facilitate the construction of these structures, the residents cut down trees from the forest. The pastoral communities also depend on the trees for firewood and charcoal to provide cooking fuel and warmth for their households. I managed to stay in a traditional manyata for about two nights. As I was entering the manyata, it was pretty dark and they had uh, firewood inside, a lot of smoke as well. As I entered, my eyes were tearing from the smoke. In addition to the severe damage construction of these semi-structures has on the environment, they are generally unstable, requiring regular reconstruction. Takula hizo mamiti ya angushe nyumba kabla mezi tatu, imeanza kubench. Na kubench kinyesha itasalalia watu na uwe. The structures also suffered poor lighting and ventilation. Dwellers often use kerosene lamps for lighting. These lamps emit disproportionate amounts of black carbon, which is not only health hazardous, but one of the biggest contributors to global warming. Because to live in Manyata is disadvantage. Yeah, during holiday, I normally land in these manyata houses, but sometime I'm not able to read. There's a lot of smoke, and then they may they may cause damage of eyes, and then I cannot enable able to. Iwe usuku, iwe mchana nigisa. Mjuto kama nyoka, ma panya, chinengi andani niatari kwa sababu na sashika na kume. Manyata dwellers do not have proper toilets for use, and 48.4% of Narok dwellers openly defecate. The human waste in turn contaminates rivers and other water sources, contributing to further environmental degradation and spread of dangerous waterborne diseases such as cholera, typhoid, and worms. <laughs> Areas like this, it rains a lot and all the water gets seeped into the ground and they have issues, generally water issues. Instead of the women having to go all the way to the river and back and the girls, we could have gutters that would be able to collect water into a tank and maybe just for sustainability sake to be able to keep water over a long period of time. Dieko Manyata was designed to combat the social, economic, and environmental problems associated with the Convention of Manyata. The ILO, who are the major implementers of the project, are collaborating with the UK Aid, UN Habitat, UNEP, and other stakeholders. The project was initiated in Narok County. We sat down uh, in the office collectively and tried to think of a creative way of bringing um, green housing uh, to Kenyans. The idea of the Eko Manyata came up as a concept, we thought through it, and it looked like something that was feasible because it would help us not only address the climate change challenge, but we also saw an incredible opportunity for employment creation. The Eko Manyata is designed to not only promote conservation of the forest, but to also improve the quality of life among the pastoral communities in Africa. Unlike the traditional one, it is a more permanent structure built from bricks and sand, come with an eco-friendly toilet, provides solar power lighting, biogas energy, and water harvesting tanks.
most pastoral communities are based in areas that have a lot of sun most parts of the year, that we could be able to implement solar energy. There was a lot of cow dung. So maybe to minimize on the use of firewood, what we could do was use biogas. The Eco Manyata project brings around um, various innovations. The, the briquettes, the, 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 the solar license, the, the biogas. And as such, we want to create enterprises around these elements of the, of the Eco Manyata to ensure and guarantee that the renewable energy industry within the pastoralist community is a sustained one. We want creation of jobs from the youth to the women and the community at large in the pastoralist communities are able to give us this product, give us these services, to be able to train them so that they can give us all this that we need to be able to roll them out throughout the country. The integration of a simple and portable biogas technology for cooking and heating energy in the Ecomanyatas will improve the living conditions of the dwellers and make use of the readily available cattle dung for biogas production. That's where you have the inlet. Okay. Yeah, that's where they are supposed to feed the uh, cow dung. Okay, these are four meter cubic digesters. So I, so the cow dung goes in there? Yeah, mixed with water. Instead of water. The ratio of one is to one, yeah. Okay, so that, that needs to go in there? Yeah, about uh, two buckets of 10 kg of cow dung. Okay. Yeah, mixed with water in a ratio of one is to one. Yep. Now when it goes inside here, now this is the actual digester. These are so forgive me, how, how do I go from here to here? Okay, there's a pipe that has oh, there's a pipe, a pipe that you have done. Yeah. But how, how, much, how many cows do I need to give me that much <laughs> dung? Well, it to ask. depends. With a minimum of four cows, yeah, yeah if they're not zero grazed, you can uh, have these digesters. So this is, in terms of the dung, this is no problem at all? Yeah, it's not for a good Maasai uh, community yeah. with yeah. lots of cows. Yeah. This is nice yeah, no problem. No problem. Yeah. Installation of solar energy kits with smaller solar panel and LED bulbs in the Eco Maniatas will provide the much needed lighting for the communities. Yeah, uh, three LED bulbs, yeah. solar powered, with a solar panel. We'll put it on the rooftop. Then this uh, battery pack will be placed somewhere. Inside. And then that will do three different lights yeah. throughout the Maniatas. Yeah. Yeah. It also has a USB port, Very so they good. can charge the mobile charge phone. The phone. So you're saving them costs? Um, we, we, we decided to collaborate with Eco Maniata. We, we want him now because they are the solution of uh, mitigating the water problems in the Maasai community was uh, harvest of water, harvesting of water, and we've come up with a solution with providing a tank. Uh, also, we are providing a sanitation improvement uh, um, solution. We have a plastic toilet slab that has a cover, easy to clean, stops flies from flying to food, so that then we don't have uh, children dying from uh, diarrhea and uh, ill health. With the pastoral communities moving away from the nomadic way of life, the Eco Manyata project will not only improve the quality of life, but help generate income among community members. The project implementers will implant green building skills into local communities, creating opportunities for green jobs. Kitambo tulikuwa tunatoka hapa, unaishi toka hapa, utoke uenda mara, utoke mara, uenda tuseme mbaka Tanzania. Sa hitu ni kama imeabadilika sababu sa hiki la mtu wakona shamba yake, titoldi, ikakuwa kuna haja ya kutembea sababu kila mtu wamepata mali yake. The most interesting things that we are seeing to create in this project are the jobs. We see a future where young people in Narok and indeed all over the country will be skilled in renewable energy, solar panel repair, uh, maintenance. We see a future where people will, will have more building skills and we, especially for the women, who have not had many forms of livelihood in terms of cash generating projects, we are seeing a future where as they become more settled and they start having their household gardens and they start putting up markets and they start selling the produce, we see also livelihoods being developed. With the UK aid, formerly being a key partner in this project, the British ambassador to Kenya was among the key stakeholders to visit the project site in Narok. It'll help the climate because the resources will be more sustainable. We won't be seeing as much deforestation. It's going to capture water. Uh, we are going to be using the cow dung for biogas. The fuel that that uses has less soot. That's uh, better for the, for the climate, but it's also better for the uh, individuals in the community. 
That'll see less health problems, less trachoma, less respiratory problems. That means when the kids are coming home in the evening, uh, they're able to have decent light from the solar panel. Uh, they'll be able to study better, have, uh, have more education. All of that is going to benefit. And then what is very exciting about this project is we're seeing the skills and the supply chain that is developed, the creation of the bricks, the knowledge that that develops. So I think our ultimate goal is, has to be for this uh, to become uh, a self-sustaining industry rather than one that requires our donor intervention. The implementation of the Ekumanyata pilot project has seen a lot of support from the Nato County government and Maasai community. The Ekumanyata is going to help us because we have a house in the house. The house is going to help us very well. It's going to help us a lot for this Maasai. It's going to help us a lot because we have a lot of people who are going to help us a lot. Minki tunakunyonga kutoka ma maji ya, ya mvua. Itakuwa hata imekusaidia kupungusa kuharibu msitu. Itakuwa unahakisha biogas. Hatutakuwa ati tunakosa hiyo samadi. Tutakuwa na wingi sababu tuko na ngombe tuko na kondo. Tunategemea maji kama hii ya mtoni ikishanga tunatafutanga mbali. Utatoka kutatega mzuri. E, utakuwa utalima kamboga kidogo kanyanya upate ka biashara itakuwa itakuwa imekusaidia vizuri sana I'm really happy about and keen to support this project because um, uh, it addresses health issues it addresses our uh, access to water issues it addresses our uh, energy issues uh, it addresses ed education issues normal traditional house or uh, household um, the, the, the the ladies the women have to travel for distance to, to collect water but using this technology they'll be able to able to collect the water. The, pl the, the whole plan is to train uh, the youth, our own uh, uh, youth, to learn the technology and to, and to upscale. And that, that will be very good for in terms of job creation. Undeniably, the Echo Manyata project has immense benefits not only to the pastoral communities across Africa. The technology employs locally available materials and simple technology that can be easily adopted by pastoral communities. Mimi ni naomba wale ambao wako na mradi pamoja na serikali wajengee hao watu wote kwa wingi ili sisi tubadilishe maisha yetu we we are really looking at um, this community being on the verge of a major transformation in terms of housing we really think that uh, with the new technologies we will will save our, on our forest because uh, we will not be using a lot of uh, a lot of timber and sticks in the in the in the construction of the of the, of the eco manyata houses so again it will, it will really help a lot uh, a big deal in terms of uh, saving our forests with the eco manyatas will go a long way in ensuring that this industry and this particular idea and innovation uh, lasts for long and is spread throughout the, the country and not just within the borders but also in Tanzania and Uganda and Rwanda where all the pastoralist communities can be found. We hope that this will be the new wave.